G'day guys, welcome back to the channel, thanks for tuning in. So today you're going to be getting the boost lakes lined out on the BA, get the boost back up to where it was, try and make about over 200 kilowatts today, and um, oh, oh, shit. oh, just trip. Hey, hey, what happened there? What the hell? Yeah, that's right guys, uh, the old BA is now registered up in Brisbane, so we're ready to tear up the streets, took her out on our maiden voyage. Old H Street car park for a quick filming sesh, the old TikTok intro. So, uh, yeah, heading off to work now, uh, fix these boost leaks and see if we can make some more power. Get it back up to about the 230 kilowatt range, which she used to be, and um, get it ready to, to take it for a drag race session and see what she runs with that power. So our main plan of attack here is going to be remove this intake pipe here to the turbo, hook up the uh, boost pressure checker, which will inflate all the cooler piping to whatever pressure I desire with the reg. Um, most likely culprit is probably going to be this silicon joiner here, it goes to the throttle body. The underside of that will probably be popped off or something, or split. Uh, that's really common. Uh, next thing most likely to be is possibly the uh, paper got cardboard gasket for the intake manifold to the head. They also blow out. I uh, used to replace them all the freaking time when I worked at Ford. Other options could be uh, that, like the turbo outlet to intercooler, or the intercooler itself might have a hole in it, or the uh, return back to the intake. One of these might have a hole in it or something, or potentially this uh, glass valve fitting here, possibly not blocked anymore. That it fit does does feel like it's got a piece of uh, aluminium or something blocking that off. So we'll uh, start ripping into it and see what we find. Another thing I'm going to be doing, which is sort of unrelated to the boost leak, is popping this airbox out and giving it an actual bit of a tidy up. See what's going on with this wiring because I don't remember doing that when I did the turbo install. Uh, I'm pretty sure I did it a lot neater than that. So going to have a bit of a poke around and see what's going on with the boost pressure sensor and. All that sort of stuff, which should be a plug down here somewhere from memory. Just so I can get the um, factory boost solenoid working again, because at the moment it's been bypassed, so. And when you've just driven your car to work and it's bloody glowing hot, lucky we got a big old dyno fan to cool it down. So, airbox out, intake pipe's now out. Having a bit of a poke around, a lot of dust in the intake, a lot of dust in that intake pipe that was there. So I think the old trusty old pod, <laughs> see all the dust in here? I think my uh, trusty old pod filter down in there is not doing the best job that it could have probably done. On second thoughts, maybe. A lot of uh, a lot of dust in this pipe. Oh, a lot of dust in that pipe too. So uh, starting to think it might be time to ditch that and go the old uh, traditional pay play to spec dose pipe straight off the front of the turbo. So I went ahead and removed the crossover pipe anyway, just to give it an inspection. And it was number one culprit. It has got a bit of a kink on it. So I've gone ahead and found a nice 90 degree three inch bend that I can chuck my boost checker on. I'll chuck that crossover pipe back on and fill it with boost and see what we find. We're dealing with some pretty high tech gadgets here. A pipe with a nido fitting on it, which goes on here, clamps on. Then we've got ourselves a pressure regulator, another nitto fitting. Hook that to the front of the turbo, hook that to shop air, adjust the pressure, see how much we're leaking. So that was holding about 10, 15 PSI and uh, the turbo was making a hell of a racket, but uh, ended up blowing the uh, boost checker out of the front of the turbo. So whatever boost leaks we've got going on here is not the reason why it's running three PSI boost. So I think we're going to move towards uh, fixing up this boost controller and see if that fixes it. And if that doesn't fix it, then I'm pretty sure the turbo is no good. So, uh, of course, trying to fit the uh, wastegate lines back up. Just just bump the power steering high pressure hose. Any excuse to leak, it says. So that just starts dripping for no reason all of a sudden. Looks like it's already leaking before, but anyway, another thing to fix. 
the other thing that's a little bit dodgier than I remember here is uh, this wastegate solenoid. Obviously, you got the power from the fuse box, I'm guessing. Can't remember how it's supposed to get wired. Then there's some crusty old white wire which runs over to the ECU, probably earths it out to actuate it. I don't remember doing it that bad, but you're gonna pull the plug off and pull the solenoid out and test it with a uh, power probe, see if it works. If it works, we're putting it back together. So this is my contraption I've got set up. Power probe, you know, the pins, and then I can only film it or do it. Then you spray WD-40 in the top hole, sprays out the bottom hole, give power to it, you hear it click, and it will disrupt the flow out the bottom and it'll vent it out. And it seems to be working fine, so plug it all back in and test it out. I also tested for 12 volts at the red wire, which I've got, so as long as the ECU is earthing out that uh, PWM side, the uh, pulse in it to activate the boost control from over here, that white wire comes in here, goes into the third plug, so that should all be working fine. Um, test it out on the dyno with it all plugged in and plumbed in properly. Put the boost hose back in. Drip, 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 bloody dog. So I've got the boost control solenoid bolted back in. A little bit hard to show on video. Down there, track some new vac hoses onto it, to the turbo and to the actuator. And uh, took it for a quick lap around the block with the turbo, with the intake off. She definitely seems to have a lot more boost, so got it chucked up on the dyno now. Give it a quick ramp, see if we make more boost than before. All right, so we've only gained about 20 kilowatts on that run um, with the intake piping off as well. So that's most likely where the power's come from, not actually fixing anything. So um, probably just have to um, have a good look at the laptop and see if we can figure it out. And see what we're gonna have for lunch and then um, then we'll worry about figure fixing the car. All right, so I ordered a chicken parma for lunch. Yeah, chicken parma, fight me, you dog Queenslanders chicken parma for lunch after 20 minutes of waiting sitting in my car literally just sitting in my car on a dyno they <laughs> cancelled on me so anyway now i'm starting to get hangry so i've ordered more lunch still haven't figured it out i'm pretty sure my turbo is actually toast so i'm starting to run out of ideas to check i'll check a couple more things and try and film them and if that's not it then i guess i need to order any turbo so probably just go pulsar g35 or something like that pulsar gdx gen 2 something something cheap to get me by no point putting a 42 on it now it's still an na motor with no accessories so definitely something cheap will be the best option and maybe just even another genuine garrett if something comes up that's not destroyed um even just an fg 3576 would probably go all right on this for what it is so get my eyes peeled see what i can find so in order to test away the scatter actuator basically get yourself to the mighty vac this is the blue point version of uh, a mighty vac uh you got vacuum and pressure set the pressure hook a hose to this put that into your wastegate actuator and see what pressure the actuator starts moving at due to the magic of video editing i have another turbo so basically you just bump this dog on pressure and watch the wastegate move i'll try and i'll try and hold this as still as i can so you can see it best by about five it just starts moving basically by about 12 it's all the way so that's the same as the other one so it's definitely not the way to get actuator one last thing i'm going to try is just a quick turbo smart boost t on the on the boost line just to uh see if that has any effect on it um what i'm suspecting at the moment now though is either the the wastegate flap has fallen off or dislodged or something or the turbo itself is just completely um it does make a lot of noise so it's possible it's just not spinning very fast so we'll find out shortly Oh yeah, and obviously it goes without saying, uh, I'm a somewhat professional um, under really controlled conditions here. You know, watching the dyno, watching the AFRs, all that sort of stuff while I'm testing this. So I don't really recommend anyone just, you know, whacking a boost tee in their car and seeing what boost it runs. So do not try this at home. Despite being quite noisy, it does actually spin quite freely. I just had enough time to get out of the car, turn off the dyno fan, and then watch that slowly stop probably about 40 seconds after I got out of the car. So 
to be honest, I don't think the turbo is actually that badly damaged. Um, however, if we look at the dynograph here, if we look at our boost lines, with the manual boost controller on it, it's the purple and the gray. I mean, we're still talking, you know, four to five pounds of boost max dropping off to like under three pound by the end of the run. Power dropped off something shocking here. We've got a lot of uh, zigzagginess. It's actually feeling like the auto or something's going on, cutting power in and out. I've tried changing the ramp rate on the dyno. That, that didn't really affect the power delivery. Just doesn't seem to like the bigger power. So not really sure what's going on here. This is the point where I do have to remind you, I've never tuned a barrier in my life. So I tuned Mustangs, Commodores, Hemis, that sort of stuff. 350Zs, never once, never once in my life turned a barrel, so I don't have no idea what I'm doing, so I'm going to learn along the way and figure it out, but if anyone knows what's going on here and laughing at me, just tell me in the comments maybe. Anyway, not really boost related, but one last thing I want to try and check um, before pulling the pin there is I'm actually going to drop this oil fade line off um, and just run it into a bucket with the car idling just to see, make sure there is actually uh, plenty of oil getting to the turbo, so if I do end up replacing it. I don't go ahead and a brand new one. Um, I'm pretty sure there is oil getting through it, but uh, just just like to double check. All right, start her up into a bucket. Oh yeah, we got oil pressure. Lots of it. One of the other things I got distracted with cleaning today was down here where the tissue box holder is supposed to live. Um, used to have a head unit in the car back when I was a P-plater. Um, had electrical tape sort of wrapped around that unit to hold it in, and obviously someone's taxed the head unit over the years left all the tape and shit hanging off there and it was really gross. So uh, I believe Stingray do a double and triple gauge holder, potentially put a triple gauge down here, probably boost all pressure and uh, I don't know, dose sufficientness, something like that. Um, we'll just go the old two gauges, boost and all pressure. Um, anyway, yeah, so it's a bit neater for now at least, so a little bit less gross, like no sticky bloody electrical tape hanging down, getting stuck to my phone and everything. Righto guys, so that's just going to end the video out there, um, basically long story short, um, wasn't able to fix anything really today, just gave it a good inspection on all the all the turbo piping and everything and boost checked it all, the, the, the turbo lines all hold boost, um, car just doesn't make any, so whether it's something going on with the wastegate flapper or something in the exhaust, um, the cat is still real rattly, so I mean if the exhaust is blocked, it's also going to struggle to make boost and power So um, moral of the story here is leaving it as is um, There's still a few things I want to drive around and go show people the car that sort of stuff So I don't want to go pulling the turbo off it today without having anything else to throw back on it other than another stock turbo so basically just going to order a like a Pulsar 3576 3582 GDX something whatever's whatever's cheap um, order that, uh, once that gets here, then I'll rip this turbo off, um, see what's going on with it. It could just be a dodgy flapper or something. You might be able to use that other housing off that other turbo. Um, either way, probably end up just putting the GDX on it, um, or whatever, whatever I end up buying and, um, going from there. So I will probably list in this video, just my sort of next stages of what I want to do with the car. I don't, I mean, the ultimate goal is, you know, a nine second quarter mile in, in this thing and a G42, that sort of stuff. But um, for now, like, you know, there's no point throwing a G42 on an NA plus T motor and just going to blow up the first time I even turn the key, basically. So um, for now, it's, yeah, some kind of stock turbo will go back on it um, and then probably a dump pipe and, and cat uh, at the same time and uh, see where we're at. And uh, the next stages will be basically in a cooler and that sort of stuff. So um there's no rush for any of that at the moment just want to get the car running with like that 230 kilowatt 250 kilowatt mark and take it to the drag see what it runs um just to see what it would have run you know back in the day when i used to own it so um thanks for watching the video guys don't forget to like subscribe all that sort of stuff um i mean yeah you guys have been killing it lately so thanks a lot um if anyone has any suggestions on what it might be what i forgot to to, to look for let me know in the comments call me an idiot whatever i don't care happy to uh I didn't take any advice, so uh, thanks for that guys, I'll uh, catch you on the next video.